we have multiple big solar flares, a radiation storm, and a one-two punch in Earth-directed solar storms. The stories and more in the news this week. If you want to learn how weather from our star causes impacts at the Earth that shape the future of our world, join professors Dr. Jenny Meehan, Michael Cook, and myself as we guide you through a space weather certificate program like no other. To enroll in the space weather and environment science program offered at Millersville University, go to millersville.edu slash swen. It's weather for the 21st century. This forecast also sponsored in part by CW Ops. Space weather this week gets incredibly busy. As we take a look at our earth facing disk, you can see a lot of regions in the north and in the south, but take a look at the regions, particularly in the north, because we had a lot of things going on. In fact, back on the 24th, you can see region 3229 firing off an M3.7 class flare. This solar flare actually also launched a solar radiation storm and an Earth-directed solar storm. In fact, the halo that we saw in coronagraphs was partially Earth-directed, which meant it was kind of going off to the west. But then another day passes, and late on the 25th, wham, right there, the region once again fires yet another flare. This time was a, a, an M6.2 or 3 flare, if I recall. And it was an R2 radio blackout, and this is a, a reasonably large enough blackout that we have to worry about aviation, and we do have to worry about those IKO ad, uh, advisories. And on top of that, we had yet another solar storm that was launched along with another radiation storm. This time the chronographs show a full halo, so this one is definitely Earth-directed. In fact, it should be close to a direct hit. So we've got a one-two punch when it comes to solar storms. We've got stepped-up radiation storms that are occurring right now, and that are ongoing and will continue to go uh, and, and stay elevated until these uh, solar storms reach Earth before things begin to calm down. Meanwhile, we still have a lot of active regions on the Earth-facing disk that are big flare players, and we have a coronal hole that is rotating in through the Earth strike zone and is giving us some fast solar wind to boot. So my goodness, everywhere you look, there's something going on, and that means we're going to have Earth effects both in the day side, the night side, and at the poles. Now, taking a closer look at that solar radiation storm that is ongoing, back on the 24th, when region 3229 launched that M3.7 flare, that's when we got our first elevated levels, but they didn't quite reach that S1 level and things have kind of calmed down. But right at the end of the 25th, we got yet another solar flare. This one was the R2 level radio blackout that was a six, uh, M6.3 flare from region 3229. And that definitely pushed us up above the S1 levels. And in fact, for those who are in the know, the spectrum of this particular radiation storm was a bit on the hard side. So that means we actually had some really energetic particles at first. Those have died off a little bit, but we're still sitting above the S1 level and likely that will continue until that second solar storm from that one-two punch hits us and passes us right about midday to late on the 27th. And as you can see, the solar radiation storms really affect the poles. So it, there we have got polar cap absorptions events, and these regions can actually have big issues when it comes to GPS reception, also HF radio. So any of you uh, pilots who are flying polar routes, definitely take a look at those ICAO uh, advisories because right now we're going to be dealing with this easily over the next few days. Now, taking a look at our solar storm prediction model, Enlil, this is NASA's version of the model, and you're looking down at the sun's north pole with Earth being off to the right. And for that first solar storm that was launched on the 24th by region 3229, you can see that solar storm being launched off to the west of Earth, really, it isn't going to be a direct hit, but it looks like it's going to hit us right about eh, late on the 26th. But believe it or not, before this solar storm even passes over us completely, we have that other solar storm. This is the one that was launched by the same region on the 25th, a day later. And as that one launches, believe it or not, that is going to be more of a direct hit at Earth. But this one isn't going to hit us until about 
the tw uh, midday on the 27th, possibly late on the 27th. So we're going to get a one-two punch with the first hit being sometime late on the 26th, the second hit being possibly, you know, the very next day. And we're going to have that radiation storm that's going to continue all the way through that and then begin to decline. But Aurora photographers, definitely keep your batteries charged because this could be a really good set of solar storms. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the first quarter phase on our way to a full moon. And by the first, the moon will be about 70% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch some dim objects in the sky and, I don't know, maybe some aurora during these solar storms, you're going to have this bright companion, so you're going to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are expecting that one-two punch from those two solar storms that are coming toward Earth. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting major storm conditions. In fact, we're expecting about an 80% chance of major storm conditions starting around the 27th, and it will continue easily through the 28th and possibly continue into through the first of the month before things begin to calm down. So aurora photographers at high latitudes, my goodness, is this going to be a good chance? You couple that with that fast solar wind, and we should get some gorgeous aurora. But you may actually have to look south to see the aurora because the auroral ovals expand so much. Now, mid-latitudes, you know, it's actually not too bad. We are expecting uh, minor storm conditions, but we do have up to about a 25% chance of a major storm on the 27th. And again, the conditions could easily continue through the 28th. But by about the first of the month, the things will probably begin to calm down a little bit. We do have that fast solar wind, though, that will kind of help, uh, you know, enhance things just a little bit. So this is going to be a good chance for aurora photographers, even at mid-latitudes, to get a decent show and possibly have it be sustained. So definitely keep your batteries charged and look for some clear skies. Switching to our solar flare and dayside radio blackout outlook over the coming week, we are sitting about the 150s for solar radio flux, and this is good news for amateur radio operators. On Earth's dayside, this means you are in the good range for radio propagation. However, sadly, we are having a lot of big flares. In fact, NOAA's giving us about a 65% chance of an R1 to R2 level radio blackout over the next few days, and this will easily continue until region 3229 has rotated to the sun's far side, and it'll drop that uh, risk just a little bit. In fact, an R3 level radio blackout, these are the X-class flares, we do have about a 15% chance of an X-class flare easily over the next three days, and again, that risk will drop just a little bit as we move in through the beginning of the month, uh, but not too much because we still have another couple regions like region 3234 and 3236 that are quite, uh, uh, you know, flare capable. Let me put it that way. So we definitely realize that big flares are going to continue to stay on the menu. Now, as we turn to our uh, radiation storm and polar aviation outlook over the coming week, know that we are in an S1 level a uh, uh, radiation storm right now, and this is easily going to continue for the next few days as those big solar storms hit Earth. We won't have anything really calming down until those solar storms hit Earth and begin to pass Earth. That's when they, the storms can begin to calm down. However, because of region 3229 uh, uh, that's rotating to the sun's west limb, we are having a, an, an elevated risk of additional radiation storms. In fact, about a 15% or 20% chance of additional radiation storms over the next few days, and that's going to calm down probably next week. So sadly, if you are a pilot, please be sure to check those ICAO advisories often. And if you're a high-risk passenger, please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week is very exciting. We have those one-two punch from those solar storms. The first solar storm is going to hit us probably late on the 26th, and then the second one will hit us somewhere midday on the 27th, possibly late on the 27th, and that means we could be storming until easily the 28th before things calm down. So aurora photographers, definitely keep your batteries charged. We could get aurora well into mid-latitudes, and it could last over a long period of time, along with that fast solar wind that we're getting from that coronal hole. So it's almost like a perfect uh, opportunity here to get some decent shots as long as the weather holds out. 
Now, you amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, I know we've got a lot of radio blackouts right now. And in fact, we just had an R2 level radio blackout and the risk for radio blackouts is pretty high right now. And you're just going to have to grin and bear it. Plus, we've got those solar storms that are going to be hitting on Earth's night side and that causes problems for you too. Just remember that on the day side, switch to higher frequencies. On the night side, switch to lower frequencies when that solar storm hits and you'll be able to ride through this okay. And now GPS users, well, it's not looking so great for you. You've got a lot of stuff going on on the day side and now we have solar storms at the night side and we also have radiation storms at the poles. So this causes problems for GPS reception pretty much all the way around and you're just gonna have to hunker down and definitely uh, watch yourself, especially near dawn and dusk or near anywhere near Aurora because that does cause issues for reception. And of course, if you happen to be a drone pilot, be sure to calibrate your magnetometers often and be careful with uh, your GPS reception. And any pilot also make sure you check those ICAO advisories. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.